Welcome to Searchlight, a survey through Scripture with Pastor John Corson. It is our desire to bring you a systematic study of the entire Bible, chapter by chapter, book by book. Babylon is inland. It's not a seaport town. But here, the analogy, that the language is very clear. This is not figurative. This is literal. Chapter 17 is symbolic. Chapter 18 is literal. There really is a destruction of a city in a single hour, and the men at sea watch the burning, and they're going, Alas, what city is like this that is being consumed by fire? And they cast, verse 19, dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. Over and over again, this idea, in a single hour, how could this be? As they're viewing it from their ships. What's heaven's response? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Rejoice. This corrupting, fornicating influence that has ruined people and cultures and nations is now coming to an end. Rejoice, heaven. The mighty angel, verse 21, took up a stone like a great millstone, cast it into the sea and saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Well, the voices, verse 22, of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeteers shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. So music, cafes, hard rock, planet Hollywood, all the rest, no more. That's it. And all the grinding at the millstone. Well, I'm just grinding away at my job. My nose is to the grindstone. No more. That's it. The light, verse 23, of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. Again, old commentators were troubled by this. What does this mean? A whole city going up in smoke and suddenly no one even lights a candle? Who wouldn't light a candle in the moment of destruction? After the destruction was over, who wouldn't light a candle? I'll tell you who wouldn't light a candle. People who don't have candles. Modern culture. In modern cities today, in sophisticated cities, how many candles would be lit? If there was a total, complete power outage, there would be darkness. What would cause a power outage? Well, the destruction of a city and a nuclear exchange, of course. How terrifying that would be. No candlelight. No more marriages. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more. No more normal life celebrating. All that stop now. Note three things here, and we're going to tie this up in a way that I think you'll find interesting. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Clue number one. Who, what, where is Babylon? Well, it says here, first of all, thy merchants were the great men of the earth. That doesn't mean they were great guys. It means that they were the wealthy men of the earth. The idea is this. This is what really angers the Lord righteously about these great men in Babylon. They're making a killing, literally. doesn't matter how. Got to keep the economy going. Got to keep the profits flowing. Got to keep the bottom line growing. Thy merchants were the great men of the earth. They just make money. And by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. The word sorcery there is, again, that word I've talked to you about before, pharmakia. 
Drugs figure in hugely in Babylon. All nations are deceived. The idea there in the language is very clear. All nations are caught in the web of pharmakia. All nations are caught in the web of drug trafficking. Why? Because of Babylon. Now, you have been reading studies, no doubt, or come across articles on news shows or in magazines. You know that what really drives the drug industry in the world today unquestionably is the United States of America. That's it. The money is here. It's supply and demand, and we demand, and the world supplies. Heroin addiction, of course, is absolutely skyrocketing. It's all about money. It's all about drugs. It's all about pleasure, sorcery. So Babylon is the place where great men, rich men are. Babylon is the place where drugs have caught the whole world in a web of drug marketing. And the third thing we see here, and in her was found the blood of prophets, of saints, and all that were slain upon the earth. The death of saints. It falls on Babylon's head. Well, what do you mean? Here's a shocking statistic for you. Since the turn of the century, 1900, there have been an average of 250,000 born-again Christians martyred every year. Now, now, let that sink in for a moment. Every year from 1900 to 1997, there have been an average of 250,000 per year. Christians are being wiped out around the world at an unbelievable rate. And again, if you've been following current events, you know that this issue is presently before the U.S. Congress. Because the Christian community is at last saying, hey, wait, what's taking place around the world in some of these countries, the slaughtering of born-again believers, America must take a stand, particularly as it relates to the nation of China, where most of the martyrdom, at least the highest percentage of this kind of brutal persecution has taken place. But you know what? Guess what? We refuse to deal with it. We have once again said China will have most favored nation status because China is the greatest market in the world today for our goods. One and 2.5 billion people. Too big. It's Babylon. Babylon who says, even though we know as a nation, as a country, even though we know that there's the slaughtering, the brutal butchering of Christians, we cannot afford economically to make too big of a deal about this. Let them die. Let there be abortions by the multiplied many hundreds of millions in China. Let let, let them be nine out of ten are girls being aborted, as I mentioned in a previous study because they're allowed one child per family in China. Where's, where's the feminists? Where are these women? I don't understand this. I, I really don't get it. Where are the women activists? Why wouldn't they say these feminists? Why wouldn't they say, we've got to take a stand against China? Nine out of ten abortions are girl babies, fetuses being aborted. They take ultrasound, they, they find out it's a woman or a girl, and they say, flush her. Because every family, if they only have one child, is opting in 90% of the cases for a boy to carry on the family name. And see, we know this stuff. That, that, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> our nation, our, our leaders, our whole government understands the situation very, very, very definitely unquestionably. So, John, let me get this straight. Then. Now, now you, you're confusing me, you say. 
You talked about Babylon in Iraq, and you're saying that that prophecy has not been fulfilled, at least according to some experts, where the whole city is wiped out like Sodom and Gomorrah off the face of the map, and yet we see Babylon emerging. We see a a city there still functioning or being restored as we speak. And then you're talking about this city, though, described here that seems to be a seaport city and that influences the whole world, what are you suggesting? What I'm suggesting to you is there are those who believe that Babylon is America, New York City, specifically, dominating the world's economy. I want to show you some interesting things of why that could very well be. Turn quickly with me to Isaiah chapter 18. Now, for you who are real students of Bible prophecy, if you want to pursue this further, you need to look up Three sets of scriptures to study in depth when you have a chance. Revelation 17 and 18, that which we're doing tonight, dealing with Babylon. And then to sort of really put the pieces together, you need to look at Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51 and Isaiah chapter 13 and 14. We'll look at some of this in a moment, but first chapter 18 where we see something being talked about that intrigues many Bible scholars. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Considered in Bible days in Isaiah's time to be the the, the, the unknown realm. That is, when you talk about the rivers of Ethiopia, you're saying, which is beyond, beyond. You know, way out there somewhere. The land shadowing with wings. There are those that suggest in that we see now being spoken of prophetically the insignia which represents our nation specifically. For our insignia, of course, is the American bald eagle, and you've seen the great seals and the insignias with the wings spread out, the shadowing of wings. Could be interesting. That sends ambassadors, verse 2, by sea. Where would there be a nation in which you would send your ambassadors as it relates to the Middle East here, chapter 18? Where would you send ambassadors by sea to? Beyond the sea. And go, verse 2 goes on to say, ye swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled. So there's a land that's way out there beyond our understanding, they would say in Isaiah's day, with the overshadowing of wings that you send ambassadors to over the sea from where we're living here in the Middle East. And it's a wide land, and it's, a pol- it's wide, and it's a polished nation. That's the idea, that's the literal Hebrew. Wide, outspread, and polished. To a people awesome from their beginning. A nation, watch this, verse 2 goes on to say, a nation meted out and trodden down. It will say in your margin, of line and treading underfoot, which means this. You're wide and outspread, and you're taking line by line, and you're conquering the land. You're, 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 you're tromping on the land. You're taking over the land. This nation that's awesome from the beginning is spreading out and conquering. And there are those that say, my goodness, this is an incredibly precise description of our own history. We have an awesome beginning. The whole world watched the American Revolution. And what did we do? We felt there was a manifest destiny. A destiny to move across the country from coast to coast. And whatever indigenous people groups are in the way, so be it. We've got a destiny from sea to shining sea, you see. And then it makes this interesting reference. It's it's interesting. A land who's been widened and trodden down, conquered, whose land the rivers have spoiled. So in the process of this widening, conquering, far-off country that's by the sea, and there's also pollution. There's the pollution of the pristine country that once was, that never again it will be pristine, you see. The rivers have been spoiled. Now, turn over to the book of Jeremiah chapter 50. And I want to show you something very interesting. 
We don't have time, obviously, to look at this in depth. I'll just point out to you four or five scriptures, and you can read them through, and you can think about it and see what conclusions you come to. But in talking about Babylon, we read this. Verse 12, there's coming a time when your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bore you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, a desert. Coming a time when Babylon, whoever Babylon is, as it relates to the final destruction, you see chapter 50 and 51 relate to the final destruction of Babylon. It is the same event being talked about as is talked in chapter 18 of Revelation. And the mother is confounded. The mother is amazed, perplexed. There are those that say that's going to be exactly what England is going to feel and think when our nation goes up in smoke, when our Babylon falls apart in a single hour. Oh, come on. I get where you're going. You're trying to say that we're going to get wiped out in a single hour in a nuclear... You don't, you're you not reading the paper. The Cold War is over. You're not reading the paper. This was in the paper three days ago. Russia revives first strike policy on nuclear warheads. The article talks about for the first time in history, Russia is publicly acknowledging, you can check it out yourself, Russia is publicly acknowledging that she, if feeling pressured, will launch nuclear weapons first strike, which means she will not wait for an attack, but she will be preemptive in the use of her nuclear arsenal. Interesting. I don't know what this means. Just interesting, I think. But... We read in verse 37 as you go through these things. Boy, a sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people. In other words, this nation that is now being destroyed, the mother confounded, confused in her observing of Babylon being destroyed, if that indeed be England, our our mother if you would, But the people of Babylon, unlike historical Babylon, the people of Babylon are called a mingled people. That means it's an interracial group. It's a melting pot, which is not true in historical Babylon, where it was a mono-ethnic group. This idea here is it's a mingled people that are being devastated. It's It's a nation of a mingled people. Interesting. Chapter 51, turn the page and look at verse 13. Still talking about Babylon, this, wherever this is, this Babylon, O thou, verse 13, that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, the measure of thy covetousness. Now, historical Babylon does not dwell upon many waters. It dwells upon one river, the Euphrates. Whoever Babylon is has water all around it, like the Atlantic and like the Pacific and like the Gulf of Mexico and like the greatest, as you well know, one-fourth of all fresh water in the world is in the Great Lakes. Did you know that? It's amazing. We're we're surrounded by water. One-fourth of all fresh water in the world is in the Great Lakes. So you have the Great Lakes, you have the Gulf, you have the Atlantic, you have the Pacific... This this Babylon is dwelling among many waters, abundant in treasure. Huh. It gets even more interesting. Look at verse 49, if you would. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Babylon, wherever, whatever Babylon is, it exists at the same time that Israel exists. And it's held responsible for the destruction of Israel. The implication could well be that when Babylon could have come and rescued Israel in an invasion, described perhaps the invasion talked about in Ezekiel, that Babylon chose not to get involved in the war for reasons that deal obviously with economy. We talk about the Russian invasion described very 
very, very clearly in Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39. Whatever, this Babylon allows Israel to be slain, which means that it exists at the same time historically as Israel does, which, how about this, verse 53. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. It's not even if Babylon could, it is Babylon will mount up to the heavens. We're talking space program. Babylon will mount, and what will she do? She will fortify herself in the heavens. Now, these are things that the prophets must have thought, how do you fortify yourself in the heavens? Well, we know. Star Wars. I mean, all of this space stuff, only one nation, truly seems to fit this particular sequence of descriptions. A nation mounting up into the heavens, fortifying herself from the heavens. A nation surrounded by water. A nation that is existing at the time of Israel and allows Israel to fall in the day, in the hour of Israel's need. A nation that is incredibly wealthy, a nation that's now we go to Revelation again, the nation that allows drugs to be driving economy, the nation that lives deliciously, the nation that's on the water when the city of its true center of commercial activity goes up in smoke in a single hour. You've been patient, I don't have the time, but I leave with you a simple thought that it very well could be. The Babylon described in Revelation chapter 18 is America. Very possibly. My opinion, for whatever it's worth, is that America is going to go down. Whether or not she is Babylon, she is strangely absent from the end times scenario as far as it relates to the power brokers in the tribulation, which seem to be the false religious system in Rome, the revived Roman Empire, uh, a restored Russia and Israel, as well as a Chinese-Asian coalition coming from the east. But it's really difficult to try and figure out exactly how our country fits in. And either it is because this nation is truly devastated in a nuclear exchange described perhaps in Revelation chapter 18. In one hour, it all goes up in smoke and the whole world is amazed. The merchants from their ships, if you would, watching Babylon burn New York City go up in smoke. Or it could be, it could be, that the rapture of the church will so gut this country, and I hope that's true, that the rapture of the church so cripples this nation that we do not figure in the end time scenario. Because the Christians, any and all who believe in Jesus Christ, be they strong or weak, be they solid or vacillating, hey, those that believe that Jesus died for their sins and rose again and embrace that gift of gracious salvation, they're up and they're gone. The whole body is taken. If I was to leave tonight for Hawaii, wouldn't that be grand? But if I was to... Guess what? My whole body goes. My toe may be infected. My head may be hurting. My, my, my fingernail may be falling off, whatever it might be. But the whole body goes. I don't say, well, I'm going to leave my toe here because it's infected. Or I'm going to leave my head behind because it's aching. No, the whole body goes. So too in the rapture, the whole body goes, gang. You understand that? The whole, the whole gang goes. Boom. And we're transformed in the process. You say, well, I don't believe that, John. I I believe that only strong Christians go up. Or you say, I I, I believe that that we're going to go through the tribulation. That's okay. You're welcome to that belief. That's fine. You'll still go. (laughs) You'll still come along. 
and I'll explain it to you on the way up. <laughs> if you would like to have this complete teaching, you may order one from our website at johncorson.com. You may also call us toll free at 888 888- Five four four forty eight fifty eight, and ask for the teaching from today's date. Again, that ordering number is 888-544-4858. You will also find on our website a variety of Pastor John's books, teaching packets, MP3 CDs, and other Bible study resources. Again, the address of the website is johncorson.com. Searchlight is a listener-supported ministry. We appreciate your prayers and support. May the Lord richly bless you.